Hi everyone, my name is Sean Walker. I'm a Principal Product Success Architect here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Return to Merchant Authorization or RMA flow. A Return Merchant Authorization or RMA is an agreement between a buyer and a seller that lets the buyer return or replace a faulty product. The Asset RMA Order Catalog item has prescriptive flow to streamline the RMA process. When an RMA request is, is submitted, an RMA request line is created for each asset and consumable that was selected. You can view a list of all the open RMA request lines in the Hardware Asset Dashboard. The RMA prescriptive workflow manages the repair process for assets and parts covered by warranties and service contracts. A common challenge for organizations is being able to keep track of all their assets that are being repaired or replaced as part of the RMA process. The out-of-the-box workflow helps organizations manage all the scenarios that arise during the RMA process, including on-site and off-site repairs, as well as replacements. I'll now jump into an instance and walk you through the RMA process. Okay, so I've logged into a Vancouver instance uh, of ServiceNow, which has HAM Pro installed, and I'm going to walk through the RMA process. So I'm currently logged in as a support technician who's going to uh, log three different RMA requests uh, for three different pieces of equipment they have on site that need to go away for repair or be repaired in general. So uh, I'm going to navigate to the service catalog and I'm going to look for RMA and open up the asset RMA order. So on the form I can add as up to 50 um, different assets that I want to send away for RMA. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my three assets. So I'm going to take a look for anything that's in a state of in stock pending repair. And I can see I've got three assets. So I'm going to select the asset and add it. And now I'm going to add the next asset. And then I'm going to add one more asset because there's three different steps in the RMA flow that I want to show you today. So. All right, and here's the third asset. Okay, so now that I have all my assets added to the RMA order, I'm going to submit this. All right, so that's been submitted, submitted successfully. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to navigate over to the Hardware Asset Workspace. And on the workspace, um, I should be able to see we have three open RMA request lines. So the RMA order was created, one RMA order was created with three separate lines. So we can see here we've got RMA number, line number four, five, and six for all three different assets that were added to that RMA order. So I'm going to go into the first and open up the tasks. So the first task that the technician has to do is they have to assess the the asset. So this is where they're likely going to call the vendor and make sure that the asset is under warranty, talk to them about the particular issue that this asset is having, and the vendor is going to make a decision on what to do, whether they replace it or repair it, and whether they come on site or off site. So in this case we're going to say that the vendor is going to send a technician on site they're likely going to provide us an RMA number and we can add any notes that we want um, to this. Uh, so we just say screen is broken just so we can track that. And now we're going to close this task. Oops, I missed the vendor. 
Okay, so I needed to add the vendor. So I'm just going to add which vendor this is. And since they're Asus laptops, they are going to be repaired by Asus. So they're under Asus warranty. Click that and I'm going to close this task. And now I can come back over to this, um, this particular uh, RMA line number. And I can see that the next task is for on-site repair. So the technician will wait, the scheduled time, the ACES repair technician will show up and they will do the work on the asset. So repaired asset. And we can come down here and under the repair confirmation, I need to say, yes, it's been repaired. And I can go ahead and close this task. And so that's how you go through the process of, of doing an on-site repair. There's only two steps in the flow, and that's basically calling the, calling the manufacturer, getting the RMA number, scheduling the technician. The technician comes on site and repairs the asset. Um, the next RMA line order number here, we can now see that if we refresh this, that first one is gone because it's now closed. We can deal with the second one. And for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I have starts off with the assess. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to assess what's wrong. Again, I'm going to call the vendor, tell them what's wrong. Uh, in this case, again, the vendor is ASIS. Uh, vendor, give me an RMA number. But this time they want me to send it off site for repair. So they're not going to send a technician. We have to send this off site. Uh, I can put a note here sending away to be repaired. Okay, and I can close this task. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is that um, as you're going through the different tasks within the RMA flow, the asset state will update uh, as it goes. So if you remember when we selected them, they were all in stock pending repair. So now if I take a look at this asset, uh, I can see it's still in stock pending repair, but we'll come back to this in a minute and we'll see what happens um, as we go through the next uh, step in the RMA flow, which is to ship the asset. So now I'm the technician, I'm going to come in here. I've got my vendor RMA number, it's going off site, I'm going to ship it. Uh, ship the asset. I can pick my shipping carrier, so we'll say we're sending it FedEx. Put in my tracking number and when I'm going to ship it. Let's say we're shipping it today. And I can hit close this task. So now if we go back over, we need to refresh this. So I'll just actually just open, open up the next task. And then I'll just quickly show you where that the status has now updated. So the asset status automatically updated to in transit. So it's no longer in stock pending repair because we have shipped it and it is no longer on premise with us. So, um, we go through the next task. So the vendor RMA decision, right? So they're going to get it on site. They're going to determine what's going on and they're going to let you know what they're going to do with it. So you have two options. They're either going to repair it or they're going to replace it. So the first option we're going to do is the repair. And we'll just say a little note here, vendor fixing, yeah, fixing the asset. Okay, and then we can go ahead and close this task. Okay, and then we come back into here and we see they've made that vendor RMA decision is close complete. And now they've shipped it back to us and we receive the asset. So again, we can take a look at the asset state and it's still in transit. So we're going to go ahead and finish the last, uh, the last task, which is to receive the asset. And we come down and under receive, we say, did we receive it? Yes. And we close this task. And so this finishes the last task in the, um, in the army flow for an offsite repair. And if we go again and take a look at our asset one more time, 
we can see that is now back in stock available in our Canada East stock room. So this one's ready to be redeployed because it's been fixed. Now the, the third step, and we'll refresh this, that one should be closed. Yeah, the third option you could do within the RMA flow is to send it away for offsite replacement. So again, it follows through the same steps where we assess the laptop or we assess the, um, the asset and we're gonna send this again offsite. Again, it's another Asus laptop and they gave us a different RMA number. And then we'll just make some notes here. Away for, sending away for replacement. And we're gonna go ahead and close this task. And so the next task gets generated, which is to ship this. So now we're gonna go ahead and ship this. Uh, again, we'll ship it by FedEx. Put in our tracking number and pick the day we're gonna ship it. And close this task. And so now the vendor needs to make the decision. So they've received the asset, they've taken a look at it, and they've decided they want to, instead of repairing it, it can't be fixed, they're going to replace this under warranty. So we're going to choose the replace option. Vendor is replacing asset. Okay, and then they're going to ship it back to us. They're shipping it back to us today. And we close this task. So now when I come back into my tasks, I'm at the receive state again. So it's just like the offsite repair. Um, the offsite replacement follows the same steps, which is a little bit different on the receive process. So now, I come in here and we can see RMA actions offsite vendor action is replace. So we're wanting to confirm the receipt of the asset. So has the asset been received? Yes. And here's where it asks us to pick the replacement asset. Now, since this asset is a brand new asset, it won't be in our system. So prior to completing this task, the technician is gonna have to actually create the new asset in the system. So I'm going to come back over into my asset estate under my hardware assets and I have the asset in front of me. Oh, and sorry, the support technician can't actually create the asset unless they have the proper privileges. So I'm just going to quickly end this impersonation and impersonate a ham admin or ham manager who's going to actually need to create this asset because they have the right permissions to create the asset. So again, I'm going to come back into the workspace, go to my assets and create new model categories, computer, the model is an Asus. Uh, I think they're the G73 series. They're going to put a new tag on the asset and they're going to make sure it's in stock available and they're going to pick the stock room that it's in. And again, they can fill out any of the remaining information like serial number. And any other comments. So you could say this was replacement laptop from warranty. And you would want to put information about maybe which, which laptop it was replacing, etc. And we hit save. And I could jump back in as the support technician, but I'll just go over here under the um, overview, go back into my RMA request lines, and now I can go ahead and receive this particular asset. So we can go back into the receive task. Did we receive it? Yes. And I forgot to write down the tag number, which would have been a smart idea. So I'm going to track down that serial number and it was this one here that I just put in. So I'm just going to grab this tag number. 
so that I can come back into this our main line and I can find that asset that I just created. And there it is there. And now I can close this task. And now this particular RMA line will be completed. I am just going to take a look one more time at the status of this asset. So this was the original one that was sent away for repair. And if we open up the asset record here, we can see it has gone into a state of retired vendor credit. So that was the RMA flow. I know I went through it fairly quickly, but um, it will help you be able to track all of your vendor RMA actions. Um, you'll have all of the open vendor RMA order lines showing on both your inventory dashboard and your overview dashboard. So you'll be able to see those um, RMAs that are out there, some potential, potential tasks that need to be done. So this really helps support technicians and asset managers keep track of the multitude of, of devices they could have either on site pending repair or maybe sent away to a vendor that you need to get back because the vendor RMA process is generally not a very quick process. So um, you can sometimes lose track of where these assets are in the various stages of the RMA process. So I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you soon.